First there was a guitar, <laughs> then there was the capo. <laughs> or it wasn't the capo, yeah, then the, the guitar. First, the capo yeah. or the guitar. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the egg? <laughs> anyway, it doesn't make a difference if you have an expensive capo or a cheap capo. That's right. A uh, squeezy, clampy, springy capo or a cradle, squeezy, holdy capo. Here's the deal, guys. We are going to be testing the top selling capos in the world to see which one is the best option for you, you as a player. Different. How we'll are we testing? This. We'll be ranking them then on sound. Thank you for asking. We'll be ranking them on sound, <laughs> blind test. We'll be ranking them on durability, build quality, how they stay in tune, and just overall design. That's a pretty good way to test them. So Sounds very that's what's coming up. Stick around. It's going to be awesome. In round one, we're going to be testing, blind testing, the tone of a capo. Does it make a difference? Some people say yes, some people say no. I say, let's find out. That's our control. <laughs> Capo one. One more slow each string. I'm going to start at six with that one. That's exactly what I was thinking. There is a little bit of dullness to it, but it's not too bad. I didn't hear any like, like completely dead strings. Or dead. I like the high strings on that one, like mm -hmm. the high E I thought felt pretty good. The low strings were a little bit mushy. Uh, I'm going to go with a six right now. Six is all around. That's the devil's <laughs> phone number. We just rated that one the devil. <laughs> the devil's phone number. <laughs> That's our evil capo. <laughs> Burn that one. <laughs> capo number two, please. No, no capo. Neutral. The nice part about this is it really tests how in tune it'll be also. Definitely more muted uh, yeah. than number six was. Um, Do them one more time in a slow. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with a five, just slightly lower than the first one. I'm going to move to a four. I'm an extreme person, you know. You know what? Are we doing halves? Are we doing halvesies again? If you sure, wish. Halvesies. All right, four and a half. All right, moving on. Control me. Quite a bit clearer than that last one. Yeah, a lot. One more time, please, slow. Yeah, I'd say quite a bit. I'm gonna give it an eight. Seven. Without knowing where we're gonna Still go on this yet. journey, yeah, I'm gonna go with a seven as well. I think it, no, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight. I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it an eight. An eight will be that one. Definitely had more sustain, um, a little bit more clarity, more clarity to it. Um, oh, so. Stressing me out, guys. <laughs> you don't want to look like an idiot. My ears are playing tricks on me. <laughs> they are. It's difficult.
Well, that wasn't a capo per that se, was the Jason, clearest of all. But uh, that yeah, was, uh, was definitely, definitely moving to the next one. That was our palate cleanser, if you will. Everyone's going to have an open. Guys, come that's, on. That's us, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's us spitting into the bowl right there. <laughs> Not a horrible capo. When he was doing the individual strings, though, they all kind of sounded very mushy. That one especially. Oh, that one's okay. The few in the middle that are all right. Yeah, you know, a four. It gives a five from John. Man, that's hard. It might be a four. Golly. I want to go five. Again, I can't remember exactly really, the details of my four and a half in order to do that. So that one's a tough one for me. You're just going based on the open capo or no capo to that. How, yeah. Mm -hmm. How good of a rate? Yeah, open being 10. Moving on. I just sound right, so now good. We're listen so to hard. the difference here, guys. We're listening for the difference between the open and the capo. Okay. Hmm. Better than the last, I think. It's definitely a step did, up. Did you hear a little buzz on that second string? Can you do them again to see if that was... Six. I'm gonna say seven, and I think it's the material that's just not consistent on the strings. It seems like it's a little dull on some strings and good on other strings. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with a. Uh, I'm gonna go with that uh, five and a half for me. I'd like those half points just I'm to be safe. Just yeah, I just hedge your butts. It's a hard one. Cover your butts. Cover your butts. Let's open this thing up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm referring to open strings. So much sustain in that guitar, isn't it? It seemed like there was. It seemed like a lot of sustain there. That's what I'm missing from some of these capos is like that G and B string. They're just not quite as well, there. Let's listen to the next one. Woof. Well, the top strings sounded good. Slowly, one more time. Change there. What happened? <clears throat> I'm gonna get that one a four as well. Yeah, I'm not liking it. Four Trent, and a half. run me one more time on that capo. I, I know that was weird. There's something strange. It's just. A five. I'll go. I'm gonna change mine to a five. I said four and a half. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna change my mind just because you did. <laughs> <laughs> there were some things I liked about that capo. Um, I'm gonna say it was a uh, five and a half. Hmm. Do we have another one? No. Nope. That was it, guys. Time for the big reveal. So coming into this next round, we're going to be talking about these same capos. We're going to be ranking them in tuning stability, the build quality, and function and design. We like how they design. Are they easy to keep track of? Do you lose them? Do they stay on your guitar? How easy are they to put on? Yeah, how are they to put on? And how long are they going to stand up? So let's start with uh, the number six capo, Kaiser. Okay. What do we think on tuning stability? Why do you think this... 
So I would like uh, actually a demo done by Trent on this one. This one's right. a fairly easy one. Actually, I may be able to help in this. Is this okay that I get up? Am I allowed to get up? Am I allowed uh, yeah, to get up? You yeah, are. I am. All right, all right. Let me show you what we have seen as common. Stay right where you're at, Trent. So the best example of this is to kind of explain what makes a capo go out of tune. And for most people, when you fret an instrument, a note, you got to get it as close as you possibly can to the fret. The closer you are, the more in tune it is because you're not going to bend it out of tune by pressing on the string because leverage doesn't allow. So it's like, strike that note right there, Trent. But if I do the same amount of pressure here, I'm able to press it. Now I can press as hard as I want here and I don't hear that difference. So with a lot of people when they it's use it, leverage. it's called leverage. If I do that with a squeeze capo like this and put it in here, chances are it's going to be pulling it out. But if I do it closer to here, it will be better. Now this is possible to get this in here, but it is a lot harder to do so. It sounds a little more in tune that way. Now the other side of this one with this particular capo and, and an issue with this one is when a lot of people do this, they kind of put it in and when they do that, they push it and bend it out of shape and you can actually see where the string now has been bent out of shape because of that leverage situation that we were talking about. All right. So kind of hard so to do so. So keeping those physics in mind, let's go ahead and rank these capos from our experience uh, at, in tuning stability and ease of applying them to the fret. Mm -hmm. So starting with the Kaiser. I would give that a two. At best. <laughs> I mean, there was one capo we saw one day that, and, and, and I'm also including the uh, rubber band pencil trick that I've seen online. Um, the Kaiser never seems to be accurate. The size of this uh, this very set, wide. yeah, it's very wide. You cannot I was be accurate discussed with those. Is when this is on the back of the neck. A lot of times when you move down in the bump first it, position, you, you bump it, it and it then that just further. twist it. Also, it pulls mm -hmm. the strings. Affects yep. the tuning. So I'm going to give that. A2. I was, I thought you were being a little harsh with that tuning deal, but I'll be honest with you, especially with that bulkiness and being able to bump it and knock it out of tune and bend that shape and with that extreme pressure and not a, able to adjust the amount of pressure on it, you're correct. It's so easy to knock that completely out of tune. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to give it a two as well. I, I Tuning wise, just not a great capo. I, I would. I'll go with a three just to be the nice guy, but yeah, I think tuning, every one of us has tried the Kaiser and tuning is something that stands out. Or even strict capos that are similar just, in yeah, design. Yeah, that, that spring-loaded capo. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, seven, seven in total. tuning. Yes. All right, we'll give it a seven. What do you guys think of build quality? It's a it's a basic capo. I mean, the quality is just fine. I think it's nothing it's special. It's just straight aluminum. I've seen a lot in the past of these rubber parts coming loose yeah. over time. The bottom, um, it does this little. Does. <laughs> I don't know if I love <laughs> yeah, that. Nice, nice microphone on stage, but build quality, I think it's built well. It's going to hold up as good as any capo out there. I'll give it, you know, right down a seven. So it's, it's I'm going to give it a five. A five. I, I mean, think it's just a basic capo. It's there's nothing special about it. It's a spring. I mean, I don't love that they're just using a big old heavy spring on there. I mean, they could have done something a little bit. Uh, but that's when we get into better. the functionality, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, well, it's just build quality. I, it's it's just an okay capo. I, that's a, that's so, what I'd say. I would say a five. Five, five, and a six. That gets us at 16. Um, I'll go with six. And function and design. Now, this is where I'm going to give it a low rating, and that's something yeah. that we have seen in the past. I have seen guitars come in the shop, and people I know that own them, that I don't know if it's just that the rubber is too thin for that amount of spring, but they put a dent in the back of the neck of the guitar. So I've seen a number of guitars that will have a mark where this has been squeezing on it. Yeah. Same thing on the headstock. A lot of people want to put it on the headstock. The, the idea behind it was to be able to quickly change keys and put it on and off really quickly. Great thought there. But then they just went with this really strong tension spring. Well, I think the fact that they have to have the same amount of tension for every guitar, so that means high action, low action, they have to find that, that, that point where it's going to be consistently uh, clear uh, as far as clear Kaiser's go clear. Um, so yes, it's gonna be, it's, that's quite, sure. I mean, that's almost a hand exercise. Uh, yeah, it literally that's, is that's like a hand could not exercise. change keys with that. No. Yeah. And we do carry some of the spring ones that uh, D'Addario makes, have but they have a adjustability for the tension, so. And I don't recommend any capo that doesn't, because of one, knock strings out of tune, two, 
does do the damage. And like I said, I have seen so many of these where people have just chewed up their headstocks with this. And I know that's convenient, yeah. not worth it. I would not if do that. If you have the arthritis, so. it doesn't and, work. And the other point that you made earlier, the function and design, how far out from the neck that sticks. Yeah. That's always something people bump into. They'll throw your tuning out in the middle of a, show, a song or a show. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give that a one, honestly. I think that's unfortunately one of the It's my least, least favorite capo favorite to use. Of the I ones we most. did, if I was just going off of that, I'd say one. But realize there are worse capos out there in the world. Again, there's a pencil <laughs> and a rubber band. But so by doing I'm that, gonna I'm going to give it a two. That's, that All was right. my so we get out, five. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on to... Um, We're going to get a lot of hateful comments yeah, about it. We this. are. I know, it's a favorite capo for a lot this of people. This is our I opinion. Just, um, moving on to our fifth ranked capo, which would be the G7. Um, now that's I'll be honest, you guys will have more information on how these are used. I part of their design with this two-parter on it, um, it does have this, I guess it contours to whatever yep. radius. changes to the radius. Uh, for the fretboard, so that helps with tuning. And also, you're only supposed to need to squeeze down the amount necessary to actually get a clear note and then not go any farther, where this just has that one tension fits all. Uh, I but that said, in our experience using this capo, we've had to put quite a bit of extra pressure to get make a solid things. sound to get it to all the way across. Again, if you're extremely careful, it does a little slimmer profile. Um, it's got a little bit here. Nothing to hang on, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, you do have to press it hard. If you don't put it in the right location, I don't think it's great. So you know what? I'm going to go with a five on this. I'm going to call it just an average capo. I, I think it's good. It's not great. I might agree with that. I was going to go with five as well. I was going to say right six just for the technology of the radius, the adjustable radius. But but for just for tuning stability. Yeah, that uh, it does affect it. Oh, sure. I see what you're saying. So, so for a 16. Is there 16 a seems our score for the G7th. Okay. Build quality. Seven. This is where it's going to really go high. Yeah. I think these are great. They have a lifetime warranty, which is incredible. Um, the, the finish... They on this capo, cool. they look great. The design is really cool. Uh, it's and for the end user, it doesn't necessarily matter, but the packaging is great on G7 capos. That's that's an important thing. It functions as far as its build quality. This is a well built piece of uh, materials. Yeah. So I I definitely gonna put this really high up on my list as far as build quality. Uh, for me, it's probably an eight. I, I just. I like what they do. It's, you know, we, we know that we had some, you know, we didn't rank high in our sound quality, but uh, it definitely did build, uh, is built well. Yes. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like I got my money's worth out of this purchase if I was buying one of these. Yeah. I, I would give a seven to it personally. I think it's well designed. I think it could be a little slimmer in my, I mean, I don't know that it could be as the function and design of it, but. For build if quality. For ideal We're doing capo. build quality though right now, not yeah. function and design. So build quality. I'm going to give quality. it an 8 for build quality. Yeah, me too. I'm going to say it's 7. So what is that? 23. <laughs> 23. I should have waited to see if it seems <laughs> He'd have never got, got it. got it. He'd have never got it. All right, it. now we get to function and design. It. And yeah. this is where I think it ranks even higher. Very, yeah. very unique design to come up with this ratchet system where it would lock into place. Easy button to release it. Um, it has the uh, adaptability to the fretboard. Adaptive radius, so. yep. The quality of the rubber and design on the cradle itself is, is well done. So um, I'm going to give it a 9 for design and uh, just function and design. See, now, I can't go quite that high, and I'm going to tell you why. Function. Okay. The design, I think, is extremely well, I think, as well. But the problem, like we said, we have to squeeze this really, really tight and make sure it is... To get Just right to get all clearly. the strings in tune. Especially so that on a higher lowers it. I think the design idea is incredible. The way they created that clutch system, everything about that is a really genius design, and that would put it really high. But when you go to use it for function, that kind of lowers it a little that. bit for me. So I'm going to go with an eight on this one. I, I, you have convinced me. Eight all go around. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. See. So that's thirty-two. Or Twenty-four. No. Don't ask me. <laughs> I ain't doing He's math, a mathematician. Guys. He's All a right. mathematician. <laughs> What's our next capo? All right, moving on to our fourth ranked, which would be the page. The page. Now, this again, interesting. This one for tuning stability, 
is, in my use, uh, going to be pretty darn uh, good. It's a completely adjustable. It, I, I think it's going to rank extremely high. One the, of the advantage, you like the cradle capo. Yes, in yeah. general. The, the, the ability tuning stability. to add the same amount of pressure across the entire neck mm -hmm. with one single pressure point in the back of the capo. Mm -hmm. Always that, made sense. That, to and me. you only tighten up as much as you need again, so that you're getting clear notes and nothing past that. Um, something to think about is the neck on a guitar gets wider as you get uh, further up the neck. On some guitars, it's a little more tapered. So, first position, if you had that same tension and you go up to higher up the neck, this one you're adjusting the tension to each position. That can be a downside to some people that want to be able to switch keys quicker, but you're only putting the right amount of tension on there to get clean notes and that mm -hmm. shouldn't pull it out of tune as much. So I think the design overall is probably the best in uh, tuning. Now this particular capo, I will tell you the downsides of its tuning issues. Um, does not have various radius, you only order in one radius. So um, the other side of this is, it is only one, there's a wide or a narrow, not gonna necessarily be there. And we'll talk about that further with another cradle capo. Um, but you actually do have a little bit more space to bump into it. So it's not gonna get my highest ratings as far as to, uh, tuning, but it's gonna get way up there in there. So for me, this one gets an eight. I was gonna agree, eight makes sense. Eight as well. There, there is a reason to get a better number, but that's pretty high. The cradle there, so. capo in general is a really good design for tuning stability. So, so 24 for the page, if my math is correct. Yeah, you are correct, sir. Build quality. What do you guys think? I think it, it ranks a little low on this, and it, it's partly because the cradle design capos are known to be more expensive. This is a really inexpensive price point, but the materials suffer a bit from that. Yeah. In my past usage of this capo, and I've had a lot of them, um, I think they're a good functioning capo. They are not a long-lasting capo. Um, where the where the page kind of really lowers its ones for my, me personally is. I wear through threads on screws because they don't have as good of a radius. I tend to tighten them over, over tightened. We definitely have a lot more, you can hear a lot more rattling and moving. The uh, parts are not as well fit together um, yeah, as some that of the comes other cradle capos. To, that that are comes down to a price point. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to get a great design and match some of the design features and quality of a more expensive cradle capos, but reach a price point, which these do. But again, build quality, it's not as tight. It doesn't, the, tight, the fit and finish isn't there. And the, the, the fact that it's made out of aluminum uh, brings it down in, in ranking, in mm -hmm. my opinion, so. I would agree with that. So again, I think it's better than some. I don't think it's as clean as others. So for me, this is a six. Yeah. I was going to say six well, myself, yeah. six yes. Well. What exactly. is that? So How are we agreeing? 42. <laughs> 42. Yeah, that's it. All six right. times three is 42. All right, so moving on to function and design of this capo. Um, this one's a split one for me because the design, obviously, we've talked we've talked about our reasons why we like the design, but the function still loses so, a little bit for the fact that it is aluminum. So in general, the design of the cradle completely. capo, some of the benefits, they you don't lose them. So they, even when you're in the key of G, you just kind of slide it back behind the nut, stays on your guitar. So probably the biggest reason people will have to keep buying capos is because they lose them. They put them in their pocket, or they set it down at a jam and leave it there. These stay on your guitar. The only time you take them off is when you change your strings. That's a really big plus on the cradle design. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the ability to adjust the tension for each key that you get into. Some people find that as a negative because you have to crank it on there. And I think in this Not capo, it's a little bit more difficult to get a very clear note uh, without really cranking pretty hard on it. So, mm -hmm. so I think the actual cradle design, it gets pluses. The execution of that in this price point, I think, is lacking some. So I'll bring that back on this particular version of the Cradle Capo down to a seven. Yeah, I would say it's, it, it checks a lot of the boxes. I think this screw is a bit small and less gnarled than some of the, the more higher quality capos sure. in this. So a little harder for people with bigger hands or arthritis to crank that good enough to make a clear note. And that compiled with the fact that it, that it does wear out quicker in the function. Is that, is that function or is that just me? I, I, Rolling back to build I, quality. I'm but too. I yeah. agree. It's, it's a little bit more in the build quality, but yes, I, I, I see where that can affect your function scores. So because it will wear out, we have noted, we have seen it. And it's partly um, because you have to crank it so much harder exactly. on this cable to get a clear note. That it's probably starting to wear those threads out a little bit. Sooner. So I would give the page a seven. I think I'm, I'm at a seven. I'm going to give it a little bit more, only because I do think it is a great capo. 
for the money, design, all that kind of stuff is there. I'm not going to give it that half point. I know I've been uh, half point, seven and a half. So what are we doing? 21 and a half. 21 and a half? 21 and a half. Thanks, Rain Man. <laughs> Judge Wapner. <laughs> All right, so moving on to our number three. Uh, what was our number three, Our Jay? number three is the NS Pro tuning stability. Yep. What do we say about this? Again, um, adjustable capo. I love that it's a slim design, so I can get it really, really close to the fret um, without, you know, uh, Very little chance there. of bumping into that while you're playing. There's a lot less. It doesn't have as much bulk back here. It is a pretty good overall design. And again, that adjustability sc uh, score. So, uh, you know what? This one is going to rank pretty high for me. I think it's actually probably going to rank as well as the Page Capo for me in... Uh, you know, especially if I spend the time to do it. I would say it takes a step back, in my opinion, because you aren't, you don't have the cradle capable design. There's no physical way, in my opinion, you're going to have even pressure from high E to low E on that capo. There's a, there's a good argument for that. I guess you're, I guess you're right. You know what? That's a pretty good I point, Jason. You. A for a bass player, you're not as dumb as I thought you were. So what score are you giving it? <laughs> yeah, what is your score? <laughs> I'm going to go with a seven now. Seven? Yeah, I'm gonna go with this six and a half. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go with an eight. I found that I have used that capo before and it stays in tune pretty well. Um, I can't do that math. I think it. <laughs> six and a half, a seven, and, a and an eight. Take one away from the <laughs> 21 five. and a half. <laughs> All right. That's not 21 and a half. That's, that's not right. That's, that's not right. <laughs> 12, 13. 21 and a half. <laughs> 21 and a half. See? See? <laughs> I didn't even go to, I wasn't even going to try. Tr yeah, you no. know what I got? I got a cell phone. I'm going to start using my calculator here. All right, so we've got the NS Pro in tuning stability at 21.5. Mm -hmm. Build quality. Build quality. Not a bad capo here. Again, this is all aircraft aluminum. Uh, I have seen some of the springs that are inside of these wear out. You want to know what my biggest gripe for this is? Here's my biggest gripe. Back it all the way out. Oh, there it is right there. That's my biggest gripe of and the then design. You die nothing but and a, I've seen people lose these screws yeah, on a I've regular seen basis. Mm -hmm. come off in your case. What would you call that? A build quality? I guess that's maybe design issue. Um, but build quality, it, I'm going to say they're built really well and they hold up. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. As much as, a, a, as the page would. Yes. Is a, we're talking about aluminum here, so screws do wear out eventually. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to um, give that one a, a eight, I think. I'm going to say a seven. I would say, uh, because of the, the, here's my point above the, the uh, page itself. You don't have any of those rattling Jangly issues. parts. It's not loose. It is very tight, okay. tightly designed across the, the cradle and all that. All right, so you swayed me. I'm going to say an eight. I'm an eight. I'm an eight. 24. 24. Eight. <laughs> all right, and function and design. We already discussed this a little bit, but function and design, I'm not going to give it entirely high rankings because I believe the Credo Capo is a better design. One um, of well, the things you will also lose this Capo most likely because it cannot exactly. be attached to your guitar when you're not yep, using for it. For the many reasons. So I'm going to give it a six, in my opinion, function and design. What do you yeah. say? Seven say for you? me. Seven. I think it's built well, it does its job well, but it's lacking those bonuses of the right, Credo. So that's a 20, if my math is correct. Whoa. What'd you get? Six. Yeah. There you go. All right. So moving on to our number two, the Shub Capo. An old Classic. design that's you just You can't whine about forever. that. You no. just can't. Now we're talking about stu tuning stability right now. I've bumped this Capo. I've knocked it. I've re-angled it. I've done everything. It doesn't get as even of a pressure all the way across, so it does tend to Bend out of tune. And I think the yes. soft rubber really kind of grabs that string a little bit and can easily like. And if you don't have the right it. amount of tension on that, again, you have to adjust that tension before you exactly. snap it. You're not going to get it too close to be a solid. And this is sound. one thing I've noticed. Okay, and I, this is from standing next to a banjo player at times on stage that uses this this capo a lot. Is that point of position where you're having to push it past that point so it locks? There's extra pressure right at that point, which I've seen him pull his strings out, out of tune, tune while he did that. Yep. So I would say in tuning stability, 
Not the highest rank for me. No, definitely um, not. I'm going to say a five. I, I actually was going to say five, if not a four a and a half. I know with banjos, Dad seems to pull it out of tune quite often with that, and then he has to release it, tune his banjo, put it back on mm -hmm. there. But I've seen a lot of guitar players use it, including myself, five. and haven't noticed as much, so I'm going to say a six. All right, so that's 16 points for the shove. There you go. Tuning stability. All right, so now we move on to build, build quality. quality. The new shubs are built extremely well. I like it. Again, yeah. there's nothing wrong with this. They've always had extra parts. You are always available. Every bit of this capo is still available in parts, including the old versions of this capo. You can still get parts for them. And that, to me, gives it a lot of build quality uh, stuff. It's, it's pretty heavy duty. It's too, a, also. yep, a well, well done metal that. one. Again, we mentioned Dad used this exclusively. He's had one probably 25 years. And oh, I've seen, yeah, it's way older than that even. So. And it's still holding up, so very well built. They live capable. long and last. Yeah. So build quality, I'm, I'm going to give it an eight. I'd say nine. I just like the fact that it's built solid. Yep. It's I'd, not aluminum. Yeah, uh, let's go with an eight. All right, so that's 25 <laughs> for my math. Boy, we should do a math, math, tathlon. Yeah. All right, and then function and design. Function and design, guys. I think it's a very well-designed. Uh, it's the staple. Engineers. I mean, this is this is the base mark, the benchmark. I mean, in capos. The lever motion of it. Yeah. I like and the roller ball is a nice improvement from yep. over the original. The the nice bumpers they give you where the the contacts the metal makes contact. Again, the uh, the downsides the thicker, softer rubber here can mm. grab those strings and really pull them out. And they also get worn out where you get uh, those deep grooves in it, so it's no longer making good contact with the strings, and you have to replace those um, somewhat say regularly. Seven. That's yeah. exactly what I said. Seven. Seven in my Just hand. to help your math a little bit, I'll Three say seven sevens. as well. So what is that? Uh, <laughs> carry the one. Seven eleven. Twenty one. <laughs> How you did that with your fingers? I don't know. Twenty one. Come right home, please. How uh, many do you have? on our math <laughs> All right. And All we needed to know was a one, one, four, and five, right, guys? That's right. One, four, five. Our number one, guys. This is our number one, and this is stability. a version of our number one. There are other Elliott cables out there, correct? Mm -hmm. So we'll just discuss the design of the Elliott Elite. Mm -hmm. Correct. This is an Elliott Elite. Uh, push button capo. Tuning stability. This one gets my highest rating. I have never really had. If used correctly, they uh, there's just nothing to me and that if you have does the it well. One. And and get the I, correct radius. I want to go further as to why this particular cradle capo is even better for tuning than others. The Elite is a super thin uh, version, much harder to uh, get at. And ba versus the uh, page cradle, this one is designed in different widths. So one and three quarter inch uh, for those one and three quarter inch neck widths, one and seven eighths, one and 11 sixteenths, which are the most popular. And they will actually build custom ones that go even further to be even you more might wait accurate. On that for a little while. So yeah, you may have to wait because it takes a long time for these guys to build them. But this means very little amount of material hanging off the sides of the neck, less chance to bump it. It also means that you can get around it and not do a lot of uh, uh, that so for tuning I can get this right on the fret right behind it and it almost acts like can, it is the fret and you buy the correct radius for your guitar and the correct radius which brings us back to the initial point of a cradle capo constant even pressure across the entire fret mm -hmm. and then they took it one step further with a very good gear ratio on the back so that you yes, can, the without really tearing up your hand get the right amount of tension on there and not have to over tighten it to get all the strings Clear. I would agree with that. So then you're not pulling it out tune. So, so I think tuning stability, guys. What do we get give the top, it a ten. A ten for me. I might as well give it a ten. Right? I, I'm gonna like never say ten because it's just like, I'm gonna go with a nine and a half. Oh god. Just make a massive difference. <laughs> so that would be a twenty-nine and a half. And a half. <laughs> Only to be give, give It's not perfect. I mean, I, I, it's close. close. You can get, we can it is. Yeah. All right. So, so now we go into build, build quality. quality again. This one's this one is where I'm gonna have to go all the way to a ten, and I'm gonna tell you why. It is perfectly fit. Look at this. This top bar, smooth, accurate. Then you have this push button that just zeroes in. Once it's there, no. look. I'm gonna put this on the microphone. No movement. Exactly. It doesn't click. It doesn't move. The only movement is going to be in the saddle, and that's to uh, to work uh, for uh, the, the movement of the neck. Yeah, and, up yep. um, yeah, all hand built stainless steel capos. Um, there's a reason they cost yeah. a pretty penny, and that's because they, there's a lot of labor and design and 
tight fitting work done on these to make them the perfect yeah. capo. Not only that, they look like jewelry. This yeah. is literally, this is your guitar's jewelry. This is a sat satin version of it, but they also have a high gloss uh, polished version of this as well. And yeah, it just build quality you can't get. Look at that way those gears, the yep. threads turn on there. And again, it's just the, the everything is fit so perfectly that I would say build quality gets a ten. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna go with a thirty on this one because you really can't get much more precise than that, in my opinion. Function and design. Again, this one's a hard one to beat. I, I love these cradle designs. Uh, we said that about the I, the page as well. I still don't know how they do all this. I mean, that that is very small machining to get this. Plunging that plunger, uh, yeah. With, with the push button, if we were looking at one of the the uh, hinged one hinge capos, I'd say there's room to improve. But really, yeah, I think hinges the work push button, excellent. I mean, yeah, they work great. But I think that's an improvement and, on the hinge. And when we're talking about you know build quality, and uh, we kind of skipped over that again. John has had a version of this for 25 years, exactly. And those threads do not wear out because you have stainless steel on stainless steel, so mm -hmm. that you have the same quality of. Uh, metal materials working against each other so one doesn't wear out before the other and it's they last forever they're they're, they're a big investment up front but they're going to last you and you're not going to lose it so so function well. and design there's no, for me it's nothing that's that's been able to beat it um i know i only gave it a nine and a half in tuning stability um because i have been able to not but i'm it's just a 10 for me it is uh i'm not going to go design. all the way function uh, 10 on function design because i think there's there's some cooler design capos out there. They may not be as functional, perfectly functional, but there are some cooler All right. adaptive radiuses and stuff that, that do take some cool technology, but you give and take on those capos. But I think, as far as this goes, I'm gonna go with a nine, because it, it is the classic. It functions the way it should. The design is well designed, but it's not that perfect. Right. It's beautiful. Okay. I'm still gonna give it a 10. Yeah, me too. So 29, just because I want to be difficult. <laughs> I think I think Elliot's going to come out with a better capo, and then you guys are going to well, piss there is really that. Me for that. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I, I know we we've gotten grief, and when we first opened the store, a lot of people gave us grief about selling a above a hundred dollar capo. But when you divide that over your 20 years that you're going to own it, it's not yeah. that bad of an investment. How many normally, pages do you have to buy? Or how many of the other capos? Or even worse, lose. the ones that you lose. Yeah, you spent twenty right. bucks on this case. You're not going to lose that one. Yeah, as the easy. Kaisers are twenty to twenty-four dollars a piece. Yeah. You're going to lose a number of those throughout the time, and probably do some damage to your guitar. In twenty-five years, I promise you, you will lose more than ten of these. <laughs> I can promise that, and that's two hundred and fifty dollars right there. So there you go. Uh, it's it's well, almost worth it right there. After all the scores have been tallied, and that only took a half hour. Yeah, after our total. <laughs> have been counted and our finger has been crossed. I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, we've got our final scores and again, they fit back where we thought they would be. So We're coming, close in, to it. coming in at number six, the Kaiser, it is no, no, uh, no mystery. mystery that we don't like this capo. I'm sorry, it just is what it is. I mean, Again, these are our opinions. Um, coming in at number a, five. Set up one of those booths. Did you give like a final table. score yeah. of that one? Kaiser's yeah, not the good Kaiser's me wrong. final score would be 41.5. Um, yeah, Kaiser's are the worst capo. Prove me wrong. <laughs> what that mean? Set that up now. on campus. Uh, coming in at number five would be the G7. Um, with a score of 77. That was actually surprising a me. little bit of a surprise surprising for me. me. I, I do like I that thought company. it was going like to be. Capos. Yeah, I do. I think maybe one of their other capos. capable designs I wanted to test I out on the future. Agreed. Um, coming in at number four would be the Page. Um, it scores high in some areas and low in some others. I mean, yep. A really good option was, for yeah. the price. What was its score? Its score was 78.5. Okay. And again, uh, lose a little bit of score in the build quality, but I mean... Again, you're reaching a price point, and I can't, sure. I can't, can't blame them for that. that. Yep. Um, coming at number three would be the Shub. Um, tried and true. Tried and true, right Absolutely. there in the middle. Exactly how we thought it would be. That would be an 80.5. 80 80.5. 80 you can't, can't argue with that. Don't argue with it. <laughs> um, number two coming in the NS Pro. Again, we really like this capable, yeah. and but I a believe bit of a this is our number one so high. in our store. Yeah. It's one of the one of the top ones. Sure enough. So that's 83.5. Good capo. I think that is actually go a uh, step back. That's a surprise because it is such an affordable capo, yeah. a simple design. I would have thought some of the wilder designs might have done a little bit better. But again, I have no complaints about it because I think it's a solid, it. solid capo. All right. And coming in our number one spot, 
We really like the Elliots. We do. It's a 111.5, and it should have been a long 12, but I was just being a pain, so <laughs> you can call that. But, yeah, that's you know, something we really have believed in, and I think it's just because the quality is there. It makes a big yep. difference. The design is there, um, mm -hmm. so I won't argue with that either. Oh, there you go. So if you want to argue with that, obviously there's room in the comments down below. Yeah, or call Jason's cell be. phone number. Uh, his uh, number is 555. Yeah, five, 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 a, a lot of this is nine. subjective, so five, 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 I, will get, I will grant you that. Um, just like saying, who's the best mandolin player in the world? Let's open up obviously that. Obviously that's me. <laughs> anyway, no. This has been a fun thing. I think yeah. we're going to do some more capo rankings in the future. Yeah, some I like more higher-end capos. We might revisit this one. I just personally want to get out of this suit. So this has been another Shop Labs where we've yep. actually learned something. I blind science. test. Science. I like these uh, science blind science phones. and you can't argue. Science, am I right? I know. Everybody's got one. Everybody's got one. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you guys next time. <laughs>